Doing your job or functions in the world outside and fulfilling your duties in the world with an ideal constantly keeping in your intellect, buddhi intellect. Holding on to a great ideal without compromising with that ideal, live on diligently and courageously and heroically in the world outside, performing your duties without any desire for gratification or applauses from others. It is immaterial for you. You are doing it, you die, you just You are doing that job for the joy of fulfilling the job and not for the acclamation of others or the approbation of the wise. They may not appreciate what you are doing. You do your job. That is called freedom. You have come into this world, you have to live one life, 
Why are you wasting that life imitating others? Right? Everybody is doing, therefore I am doing. Are you a monkey? The monkeys always repeat what others are doing. No. You are an independent entity. This is the God-given freedom for you to live your life. Inspired by your ideal. Maybe that ideal is wrong. Never mind. You have hold on to that ideal. Then by just living with one ideal in your mind when you are living, what is the benefit? He is explaining the psychological changes that would come in that individual. Vivasayatmika buddhi. One who is maintaining this one ideal in the intellect. And without any compromising eh, with it, face all challenges that may come in the world, but always make a beeline to your goal, your ideal, by thus doing. The mind, the mind and intellect equipment becomes single pointed. All great achievements are done, whether it is the material world political field, scientific field, or in spirituality, all achievements are because of the integrated personality. Making money. How do you make millions? Not by uh, wandering mind. No, you cannot. Single-pointed. Uncompromising. What will be the condition of the market? Does it matter? Plan planet. They become rich. Single point. That's when you learn the art of living with your conviction or your ideal. Your mind becomes ekehakurunandana. The mind becomes single pointed. There is nothing that is not possible in this world with a single pointed mind. Chinmaya Satgurave Namaha. The topic we're going to discuss today is letting you in on a secret. Secret by itself is very, very attractive. Means it can hold anybody's attention. If someone who is not ready to listen to you, all you need to tell that person is, I have a secret. And once you say, I have a secret, that person will stay there and listen. The chapter for discussion is chapter 9 and it is called Raja Vidya Raja Guhyam. Raja Vidya, Royal Science. Vidya, Knowledge, Science. Raja Guhyam, Royal Secret. It's not just a secret, there's an adjective to it. It's a royal secret. Now imagine a topic like this, how suddenly Arjuna would be all alert to listen. So Krishna knew as one of the Jagat Guru, we call him the world teacher. He knows how to hold the attention of a student. So holding the attention of the student, he says it so beautifully. And we shall see that in the first verse. Sri Bhagavan Vacha, Idam tute guhyatamam pravakshami anusuyave jnanam vijnana sahitam yajnyatva moksha se shubhat. The verse is so beautiful where Krishna says, Idam to te guhya tamam. Guhya secret, tama uttama. I shall tell you uttama secret, the best of the secret. Pravakshami, why I am telling you this, Arjuna? Anusuya way. You are not a person who will simply criticize. You have an open mind to knowledge. You are not a person with closed mind and being a critic. You have an open mind and you're ready to listen. This is something very important for a student. A student should have an open mind to listen. If our mind is already shut, then we work with our prejudices. A prejudiced mind will only see what fits those prejudices. So Arjuna here was trying to keep himself open and Krishna noticed it. And therefore he's saying, I'm telling you the highest secret because you are a non-critical person, 
you have an open mind to listen. Pravakshami anusuyave. And what is this knowledge? Jnanam vijnana sahitam. Jnanam, knowledge combined with experience. Jnanam vijnana sahitam. It is just not information. This information can bring you transformation immediately. Jnanam vijnana sahita. Along with experience, yajnyatva, having known it, moksha se ashubhat. You will be liberated from sorrow immediately. Moksha se ashubhat, instantly you will be liberated from sorrow. Now just look at the presentation. Hey Arjuna, I am giving you this knowledge because you are an open-minded person. You are not a, a you know, prejudiced mind. You are an open mind person and this knowledge which is of the highest guhyatamam, the highest secret of the highest order, knowing which you will be instantly released from sorrow and it is just not an information, it is combined with experience, transformation, jnanam, vijnana, sahitam. Naturally an introduction to anything like this, one would be really interested to know. And in the next verse, he says here, Raja Vidya Raja Guhyam Pavitram Idam Uttamam Pratyakshavagamam Dharmyam Susukam Kartum Avyayam. This is a most brilliant introduction. A teacher understands the mind of the student. Students don't have much faith in them, in themselves, which is very important. A seeker must have faith in himself or herself. If we don't have faith in ourselves, we fail. That's why Swami Vivekananda said, atheist is a man who does not believe in himself. If you don't have faith in you, then you are an atheist. What does he mean by it? If we don't believe in ourselves, we can't move further on this path. So, for us to walk, for us to understand, someone should tell us, this is easy. You can do it. It is easy. That piece of encouragement is necessary, which will increase our faith to follow. So here he says, Raja Vidya. What I'm going to tell you is a royal science. Raja Vidya. Raja Guhyam. It is a royal secret. It is a royal knowledge and a royal secret. The word royal has still great uh, impact on people. Royalty, the royal family, you know, anywhere it is royal, royal treatment. People like the word royal because it is connected with the uh, high standard of living, the kings and the queens, the royal. So even the word royal is being used everywhere. You know, like uh, there are wine shops which are called royal wines. There are Xerox shops called royal Xerox. The word royal is attached to everything because it has a charm. And here Krishna is using that word Raja Vidya. It is a royal science. Arjuna, what I'm telling you is a royal science. And it is a royal secret. Royal science and a royal secret. Raja Vidya, Raja Guhyam. Pavitram Idam Uttamam. What is it? It is Pavitra, most sacred. Idam Uttamam and the highest. Pavitram Idam Uttamam. Pratyakshavagamam Dharmyam. It is lined with Dharma. It is in line with Dharma and it is imperishable knowledge. Susukam Kartum Avyayam. Susukam, you will get this easily. It is not difficult. You can get it easily. Now see the verse. Royal knowledge, I'm going to tell you, Arjuna, which is also a royal secret, which is in line with Dharma, and you will gain it easily. Susukam, it is easily, you can attain it. This encouragement from the teacher is necessary. The student feels more confident and the faith in the student goes up more saying, I can do it. So this is how he beautifully introduces. And then in the next verse he says, those people who do not have this faith, ashraddha dhana, if people who do not have this faith, they fail. So we need to keep this in mind. In this path, if we have to walk, we must have faith. And there is a difference between belief and faith. Belief is blindly accepting without proper investigation. Something is told, you do not investigate, you simply believe. There's a difference. Belief can change. Faith will not change. 
Faith comes after thorough investigating into every statement of the scripture. Once you investigate thoroughly and then you arrive upon the understanding, that is called faith. Faith can never be shaken. Belief can change. Belief is something which is there today and tomorrow it can change because proper investigation is not done. It is half conclusion. Faith is thorough investigation and then you are right. So that way we must have faith in ourselves, faith in the book, faith in the higher, which is God, Guru, whatever, in the higher, in the book, in the Shastra and in ourselves. If we have this, we will reach the goal. If we don't have this, we will go. And please never mistake blind belief as faith. Blind belief will never take us anywhere. It is faith which will take us. Gurudev says, faith is what? Is your understanding, is uh, your belief is backed by your understanding. When a belief is backed by your understanding, it is called faith. Without understanding, it is only a belief that can change. So those who have this faith will understand the royal knowledge, will understand the royal secret. Having seen this, we move to the next verse. And this is one of the best verses in the entire Gita. Verse number 4, where he says, Maya tathamidam sarvam jagadavyakta murtinaha mastani sarvabhutani nachaham teshvavastitaha in this verse, Krishna says, He Arjuna, Maya Tathamidam Sarvam. All this, this and everything in this world, Maya Tathamidam Sarvam, is pervaded by me. Maya Tathamidam Sarvam, Jagadavyakta Murtinaha. Everything here in this world is pervaded by me in my subtle form, Avyakta Murtinaha, unmanifest form. Mastani sarva bhutani nachaham teshvavastitaha. This is the most brilliant line where Krishna says, All this is pervaded by me in my unmanifest form in the subtle way. Understand Arjuna, they are in me, I am not in them. They are in me, but I am not in them. What does that mean? This and everything in this world is existing in me in a subtle way. They exist in me, but I am not in them. They are in me. I am not in them. Ninth chapter is one of the chapters I have, I have heard maximum from Gurudev. I've heard in Chennai, I've heard the same chapter Gurudev doing it in Tirupati, in Cochin, in Siddhabari, quite a few places. The maximum I've heard this ninth chapter. And Gurudev, when he takes his talks, were having nine, ten thousand people attending. And that used to be in the open grounds. So I remember when it comes to this verse, he would make everybody, the ten thousand audience, repeat after him. They are in me, I am not in them. Say it again. And it will be an echo, a huge sound. Everyone there saying, they are in me, I am not in them. And he would make us repeat three, four times so that that sentence sits in us. Please let the sentence register. They are in me. I am not in them. Now, how do I understand this? The sun illumines everything. The river Ganges or a gutter by the side, a sinner or a saint, the sunlight illumines everything. The sunlight says, they are in me, but I am not in them. The sunlight is not involved in the Ganga or in the gutter or in a sinner or a saint. The sunlight illumines them, but they are illumined in the sunlight. Sunlight is not in them. They are in me, I am not in them. The cinema screen, when you watch a movie, we see different scenes coming up there. Some could be like a tragedy and some could be a a uh, very loving, happy scene. Sometimes there could be fire, there could be rain in the same screen. The screen says, all the images which you see are in me, but I am not in them. They are in me, I am not in them. Now, how do I get this subjectively? How do I practice? So, as Gurudev said, understanding this is understanding what is relationless relationship. This is the word, relationless 
relationship. How do I bring this into practice? I'll tell you a very funny story. There was a man and he invited a lot of people to his house for a party. A lot of people gathered for the party and he was making all arrangements and he felt very tired and he went to sleep. He went to sleep and all the guests who have come found the host fast asleep and he was not waking up. So all the guests started pretending they are the host. Each guest came forward and started dominating, started controlling the party, controlling every decision there and they are the host. Now imagine every guest is playing a host. Imagine the chaos in that house. And it was so chaotic and nobody could set it right. How do you set this right? Wake up the host. When the real host comes up, all the guests who were pretending as hosts all go into their place. If you understand this, now let us take it subjectively. You are the host who is fast asleep and in you there is a guest called anger. Anger comes for a while and dominates and everybody thinks anger is the host. And you say, I am angry. You are not angry. Anger is in you and you are not in anger. Anger passes away, joy comes. And you say, I am happy, I am joyful. Joy is in you, you are not in joy. You illuminate different moods, happy, sad, kind, compassionate, jealousy, envy, selfish, hatred. All these moods come. And at that moment when that mood becomes a host, the owner is fast asleep, therefore it is dominating. So now we have to understand all the moods which come in, in my mind, they are in me, I am not in them. These thoughts are in me, I am not in the thoughts. In my light, the thoughts are illumined. I illumine the thoughts, I am not in the thoughts. The mistake what we do is we think we are the thoughts. When I think we are the thoughts, I think I am the emotion. So anger plays the role of a guest for a moment, for a role of a host for a moment. Sadness plays the role of a host for a moment. Joy plays the role of a host for a moment. If the real owner wakes up, when you wake up, you see all these things are in you, you are not in them. This is the secret we should understand. They are in me, I am not in them. So when we sit in the seat of prayer, meditation, etc., it is natural the thoughts will rise in us. When the thoughts rise in us, I should understand these thoughts are in me, I am not in them. If I am alert to this wisdom, we will allow a thought to pass. If I am not alert, I will identify with the thought. The secret in meditation is let the thoughts come, do not get into the theme of the thoughts. Thoughts can come, but we should not get into the theme of the thoughts. If we learn to do this, not to get into the theme of the thoughts, uh, we are successful in meditation. This is the secret, this is the technique. Let the thought come, do not get into the theme. That means when the thought arises, you are alert, you watch the thought and you say pass, the thought passes away, next thought comes, again you say the same. But when I don't say pass to the thought and I start identifying with the thought, and I go into the theme of the thought, then I'm dragged into the mind. So a seeker who is practicing regularly, if he understands, this is a beautiful verse which talks about relationless relationship. Everything in the world is supported by the Lord, but he is not involved in it. He won't care what happens to it. It's like the petrol. The petrol never cares which direction the car moves or who sits in the car, but the car cannot move without the petrol. Similarly, nothing can happen without the presence of the Lord, but what happens? The Lord is least involved in it. So Krishna tells Arjuna, Arjuna, understand, they are in me, but I am not in them. That's why Gurudev made us repeat this again and again. Let it register. It can help us to bounce back in no time. 
when we are down in life, something bothered and suddenly something else you have identified, struggling, just tell yourself, they are in me, I am not in them. It's a quick bounce back, a shortcut to bounce back. Just that thought can help us to bounce back to what we are. So this is a very, very beautiful verse. In the very next verse, Krishna says, in fact, they are also not in me. First he said they are in me, but in the very next verse he says, in fact, they are also not in me. Here the teacher is trying to push us to a little more subtler relevance of truth. Let us say there is a rope and suddenly upon that rope we saw a snake. The rope says, the snake which you saw is in me, but I am not in the snake. This is very clear. But in reality, if you check, the snake was never there. That snake was only an appearance. In reality, it was never there. So Krishna says here, in fact, in reality, they are not in me. For you to understand they are in me, I am pervading is easy. But the truth is, what you see is only your perception. In reality, they are never in me. So what you see is my glory, but I am not in them. Like the rope says, the snake was never in me. So if we understand this, then we shift ourselves to the next level. Because the whole world, what we see is only a perception. Like see, for example, we see a particular thing from where we stand in life. How do you see a body physically at the body level? Physically, you see a body more like a man or a woman, gender. And the same bo body, if you see mentally, somebody can be your wife, your sister, your husband, your brother, your friend. The body physically is man or woman. Mentally, with your emotions, when you see, you see some relationship. Now, same body, you look intellectually. When you look at the body intellectually, what are they? bundle of cells. If you go a little more subtler, pure energy. So the rishis who have woken up to the truth, they see the pure self and they don't see anything else. So from their standpoint, they only see the self and saying nothing else is existing. Because the body is seen from one standpoint, the relationship is seen from another standpoint. Intellectually, when we see this is nothing but bundle of cells, if you go a little more scientifically deeper, you see them as pure energy. And if you go spiritually, they are nothing but consciousness. So the Rishi who has awakened, he only sees consciousness. Everything else is not there. The perception is completely different. We see things from different standpoints. So Krishna says here, all that you see is my glory. But in reality, nothing is there. Only I exist. Having seen this much, the next verse in, the, in this chapter is seen as the central. The next verse for discussion is seen as the central theme of the entire Gita. Not just the entire Gita, entire epic Mahabharata. Mahabharata has one lakh verses and if you take them, Gita comes in the middle and this verse puts, you can put this verse into the middle portion of the Gita. Rather we can say as the central theme of the Gita. What stops you from seeking? What stops you from becoming a devotee? What stops you invoking the Lord continuously? What is that which stops? This verse explains, and this is one of those most beautiful verses, where he says, Ananyas chintayantoma e janaha pariupasate tesham nityabhi yuktanam yoga kshemam vahamyaham. Ananyas chintayantoma. Those devotees who keep me as the highest priority. First qualification. Those who keep me as the highest priority. Ananyas chintayantomam. E janaha pariupasate. Who worship me, keeping me as the priority. Very integrated people. They are not distracted. They want only the Lord. Nityabhi yuktanam. To such a seeker, Krishna gives a promise. Yoga kshemam vahamyaham. I shall give what you want and I shall preserve what needs to be preserved. Now the entire tension in our life, 
the entire worry what we have in our life, the entire disturbance can come into these two categories. I need something is one type of anxiety and worry, whether I will get it or not. Another kind of worry is I have got something, but I want to preserve them. To acquire and to preserve is the highest tension in our life. As long as these two tensions are existing, meditation is impossible. Meditation is out of question. We cannot meditate as long as these two tensions are there. I want to acquire something. I want to preserve something. These two occupy, eat our mind completely. A seeker caught in this would find very hard to meditate. So Krishna says, you don't worry about it. I will take care of it. What you need to acquire, yoga, yoga here is to acquire. What you need to acquire and shema is what you need to be, what needs to be preserved in you. I will take care of that. You don't worry. If this too we download off from us, take it away. We are free instantly. Raja Vidya, Raja Bhushyam. Instantly we are free because this is the biggest worry and we have given it to the Lord. And Lord says, I'll take care of it. You don't worry. What you need to acquire and what you need to preserve is my promise. I will do it. If you keep me as the priority, that's what he says. Ananyas Chintayantoma. If you keep me as the top priority and you consistently worship, put effort to reach me, such an integrated person, to him I promise all you need to acquire, all that you need to get will be given to you. All that you need to preserve will be preserved for such a seeker. Swami Tapamanji Maharaj was once walking in the Himalayas and he could not reach the next village because it was quite far. So he has to rest in a dilapidated temple. He found a dilapidated temple and he stayed. And in Himalayas, there was no electricity and all that. It was absolutely dark. And he was sitting in a corner of the temple waiting for the night to get over. In early morning, he'll get up and go to the next village. When he was sitting there, after some time, maybe after an hour or two, three highway robbers entered the same temple premises. They entered and it was dark. They did not know. And they thought nobody is there. They sat down also because they also want to spend the night there and next morning go with whatever shelter available. So they were also hiding in the same temple. But when they suddenly saw, when the eyes got settled into the darkness, they could see someone sitting there. So they saw someone sitting there and they went to Tapuvanji. He was sitting there. So one of them asked, what do you have? And Tapuvanji just showed a bag. He had a bag, one set of clothes in it and one book. Gita or some Vedic book. Beyond that, he was not carrying anything. So they had, I mean, he was absolutely no use. They couldn't steal him. They made a mistake. Had they stolen Tapuvanji, they would have got moksha. They give back. Because you steal Tapuvanji, what do you get? One set of clothes and one book. So they left it back and they went back. And they opened their food night to eat something. And one of them came back to him and he said, did you eat something? And it was in the middle of the night, where do you, I mean, in the middle of the mountains, in the Himalayas, where is the food? He said, no, I have not eaten anything. There is some food we have, do you want to eat? They gave him food to eat. Here comes Tapuvanji's response. He says, oh Lord, do you have to come in this form to feed me? You have taken the form of a highway robber just to feed me. Yoga Kshemam Baham Yaham. What needs to be given will be provided. What needs to be preserved will be preserved. You can be in the middle of the sea, in the middle of the desert, in the middle of the mountains. The Lord will reach you. Provided your priority is the Lord. And we shift our identity. We become a devotee first. Seeker first. And seek that what needs to come to us will come. What needs to be preserved will preserve. If these two worries go away, mind settles down quickly. Settling down into the Lord is very quick. But getting these two out is the long journey. So let us focus on shifting our identity. Let us first become a devotee who is playing other roles in life. 
that way when we do these two worries will go away once these two worries go away we settle into meditation and then we can seek the lord as we want there there's another verse in this chapter where he beautifully says patram pushpam phalam toyam yome bhakti prayachati how to seek the lord deep love is what brings in devotion to love is impossible without giving you cannot love without giving so we have to give something to the lord giving is an expression of love so when we offer it to the lord it becomes devotion so what can i offer he says patram pushpam phalam toyam yome bhaktiya prayachati with devotion whatever you give he accepts it what patram a leaf pushpam one flower or a petal a fruit phalam toyam a drop of water we can have access to this any time anywhere and we just offer giving this is an expression of devotion when we go on giving like this this devotion in us multiplies the more you give the more love in you multiplies every morning so when we sit there and seek the lord in a simple practice of offering something with absolute love a dry leaf a petal or a flower or a drop of water or a fruit when we offer it with all love the love in us goes on increasing and once it comes to that point there is no return after that and one of the last topics of this chapter is so beautiful where he says name bhakta pranashati o arjuna go tell the world my devotee never perishes once we become this kind of a devotee we never perish there is no question of falling back we only go forward so he tells o oh arjuna ho oh kaunteya go declare to the world that my devotee never perishes even if any person who was apichet sudurachara even if a person was extremely cruel durachara bad in conduct fallen down completely if he takes a resolve firmly we must consider that person as dharmatma shipram bhavati dharmatma quickly he becomes a dharmatma a noble person and once he becomes a dharmatma he changes he transforms my devotee never perishes is a promise krishna gives so we start offering patram pushpam phalam toyam keeping him as the priority dropping all the worry and anxiety yoga kshemam the tension is not there in us we quickly become that kind of a devotee and we will never perish valmiki ratnakar a decoit and once he changed what a blessing he was to the humanity it is for valmiki because of him we know ramayan he presented rama in such a way that we can admire he presented hanuman in such a way that we admire them even today he presented lakshman bharat sita in such a beautiful way that we could someone has to write it down and valmiki did what was he first a decoit but once he changed shipram bhavati dharmatma quickly he becomes a dharmatma my devotee never perishes this is a beautiful theme of the ninth chapter the secret So let's get into the secret by reading this chapter revising it Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamathaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Gurubhyo Namaha Hari Om